We have all heard stories about airplanes being grounded due to extremely high temperatures in southern states. We've seen pictures of hot air balloon pilots operating big burners below their hot air balloons as they work to leave the ground. And of course, we have all played with helium balloons tied to the end of a string, admiring how they float through the air with ease. How many of us have stopped and wondered why hot weather affects airplanes, or how shooting flames into the opening at the bottom of a balloon, or why helium causes a balloon to float? Well, it all boils down to the density of the air. If you watched our video or read our article on the concept of temperature, you may recall that temperature is a measure of the motion of molecules in a substance. As it turns out, in a gas like air, as the motion of the molecules in a gas speed up, the gas expands, resulting in a decrease in the density of the air, causing the air to become lighter. Think of the air just like water. When you throw something into a swimming pool that is less dense than the water in the pool, like a life preserver, it floats. The same thing happens in air. If something is less dense than the air around it, it floats. So, our hot air balloon is kind of like a life preserver in a pool of water because the hot air in the balloon is lighter than the cooler air surrounding the balloon. In the case of the airplane, the low air density caused by high temperatures reduces an airplane's wing's ability to create lift, making it difficult for the airplane to fly. Unfortunately, temperature is not the only thing that affects the density of air. The molecules themselves also play a role. One example of a molecule that can affect the density of air is a water molecule, and believe it or not, water molecules are lighter than the other molecules that make up air. The more water molecules, the less dense the air is. To say it another way, the higher the humidity, the less dense the air is. So, hot humid air is less dense than cold dry air. The last factor we will talk about in this discussion is pressure. Pressure also affects the density of air, which is probably kind of intuitive when you think about it. When you squeeze something, it gets more dense. Kind of like when Superman squeezes coal into diamonds. Now that we understand air density and some of the things that affect it, how do we relate density to our drying processes? We will start to tie these things together into something more tangible in the next couple of videos. If you would like to hear more about how EnviroStar can help you improve the yield, energy consumption and the quality of your drying equipment, give us a call at 320 316 3170. We would love to talk to you about the ways we can help you improve the profitability of your operation.